Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about games. Games are things that we play in my part of the world. We play a lot more games though in the fall, the winter and the spring than we do in the summer. We play a lot of outdoor games in the summer but this is a lesson about the games we play inside. The games you play while sitting around a table with friends or family. Maybe you play with cards. Maybe you play a board game. There are a variety of games that you can play. Kids play a lot of games. Most of the games that I played as a kid were very simple um but they had some of the same vocabulary as the games I play now as an adult. So, hopefully you like games or at least want to learn some English phrases and words that you can use when talking about games. So, welcome to this English lesson about games. I do wanna mention that there is a study pack for this lesson. There is a link in the description below or if you go to bobthecanadian.com, the study pack has all the original slides as a PowerPoint and it has a crossword puzzle handout, a matching handout, a matching with pictures handout, a vocabulary sheet. I think there's nine or ten handouts. Um so, bobthecanadian.com if you want to have a look at that. Board games. So, we refer to games that you play on a table um in two ways in English. They're either board games or card games. Board games are games where it comes in a box. You open the box and there is a game board. There are pieces. There might be dice. I'll talk about a lot of this stuff later and there are rules and you play a game using the board. Card games are games played with cards. Um the cards we play with here, there are four suits. Um you do something called shuffling. I'll talk about that later. Uh and you sit with people and you follow the rules for whatever game you're playing. Maybe you're playing bridge. Maybe you're playing rummy. There are a variety of card games. With board games, maybe you're playing Monopoly. That's a popular game in my part of the world or maybe you're playing a game called Scrabble which is a word game. By the way, Scrabble's a great game to play if you're an English learner. So, board games, any game you play on a table um where you sit around a table with other people and enjoy playing a game that looks kind of like this and other variations. Card games, any games you play with cards. The people, just like a sport, the people who play a game are called players. Um and a common question you might hear is how many players? So, someone might say, hey, do you wanna play a new game? And you might say, how many players? And they'll say, oh, we can play with four or six um uh players. They'll say, oh, you can play with just two. But the people who play a game are called players and of course, the verb you use is to play. You play a game with other people and those people are called players. And then again, the question, how many players? I have the little orange arrow here because on the box, I think it says four to six players. It also says ages six plus. So, you can be quite young to play that game. Every game has rules. Usually, when you open the box of a board game, you can find a piece of paper and it will say rules for playing Monopoly or rules for playing Scrabble. It's very important that you read and understand the rules if you're playing a new game. Um it's very important that all the players have read and understand the rules. Sometimes when you're playing a game, you need to explain the rules to people because they haven't played it before. This past week, I played a game at work. Teachers sometimes play games at work and the person I was playing with had to explain the rules to me. They had to tell me how the game worked, what I needed to know to score points and to win. So, it's always nice when you're learning a new game if you can read the rules or if someone can explain the rules to you. So, this is a very common sight in my part of the world. It's called a card table. It's a table where the legs fold up. We have a card table in our back room and usually in the fall and winter when it's colder outside, we have the card table out not just to play cards. We also use it to do puzzles, to play board games and of course, to play cards but it's a table where I'm not sure if you can see it. I'll zoom in a bit but the legs can fold up and it has some folding chairs as well 
although we usually use normal chairs. But a card table is a table where the legs fold up and you can store it somewhere and you can take it out and set it up when you want to play a card game or a board game. So, a deck of cards. So, this is a deck of cards. I believe a deck of cards has 52 cards in it. It has four suits. It has clubs and spades and diamonds and hearts. At least the cards I play with. Um and it is usually something where you buy it in a pack and when you take it out, you call it a deck. There's also something called the joker. If you add the joker, there's 54 cards. I think there's two jokers. We don't usually play with the jokers though. Um if you don't know what the jokers are, I think that was the card that was on the thumbnail of this lesson. So, this is a deck of cards. And this is to shuffle. There are two ways to shuffle. So, you can also here I have a deck of cards right here. This is how Bob shuffles, okay? Bob shuffles like this. Bob doesn't shuffle like like that. That's too that's too hard for me. The way like you have to ha- split the in half and then you gotta do this and then the cards go flying everywhere. So, there are two ways to shuffle. One is like this and you do this to mix up the cards. You want the cards to randomly come off the deck. So, you don't want them to be in order. You want to shuffle them to mix them up. Um I wish I could shuffle like that. I know a lot of people can shuffle like that. I have friends who can shuffle like that but I can't. By the way, it's a fun word, shuffle. Um and it means to mix up the cards. Once you have shuffled the cards, you need to deal the cards. Oh, by the way, that's the joker but in this deck, the joker is a horse for some reason. So, I guess I shuffled the jokers in. Anyways, when you deal the cards, it means you give the cards to the people who are playing. Generally, you give people one card at a time. So, if we were playing a game, we would take turns being the dealer. I'll talk about take turns in a bit. Um and we would then deal the cards to people. So, I would shuffle. I don't wanna drop the cards and then I would deal. So, if everyone needed seven cards, I would then deal and give every person seven cards. One at a time. You don't give a person seven cards right away. You do one person at a time until every person has seven. And then a very common question when playing a card game is whose deal is it? Generally, when you are playing a card game, each person deals. So, you deal, you play a round. When that round ends, the next person deals. It's usually not the case that one person deals all the time. Unless you're like gambling at a casino, then they'll have a dealer. I don't really know what that's like but uh generally, when you're playing a game, this is a very common question. Whose deal is it? Because sometimes you forget who the last person was that dealt the cards. Your hand. When you're playing a card game, if I'm playing a card game and if I was dealt uh seven cards, this would be my hand. So, this person's hand depending on what game they're playing might be a good hand or a bad hand but you take the cards you've been dealt and you kind of fan them out a little bit like this and then this is your hand. I usually hold mine. I kind of bend the cards a little bit and I hold my cards close because I don't want people like it's bad if you put your cards like this because then people can see your hand. So, I usually hold my cards fairly close. So, that is your hand. And to stack the deck. So, this is a hard one to explain but if I was dealing the cards, if someone said, whose deal is it? And I said, oh, it's my deal. And if I did something like this, if I, let's say there's four people playing and if I put, let's say twos were good and then I made every fourth card a two and then I deal and then I get all the twos, I would have stacked the deck. So, stacking the deck is cheating. You shouldn't stack the deck. Um but if you do stack the deck, it means that you make it look like you're shuffling but you arrange the cards secretly so that when you deal, you or your partner gets really good cards. So, we also have an English phrase, the deck was stacked against me. You know, I applied for the job and I didn't get it. The deck was stacked against me because the man hired his own son. 
So, in life when something doesn't go your way, you can say the deck was stacked against you. So, you can use a game term in real life as well. So, let's talk a little bit about turns. So, when you play a game, you need to take turns. You need to know whose turn it is. In fact, we often say whose turn is it when you're playing a game. So, let's say you're playing with three people. The rules of the game will probably say the person to the left of the person who deals the cards goes first and after that, it's the next person's turn. So, when you take turns, it means each person has a certain amount of time to do what they want to do in the game. The other people who are playing can't do anything during that time. They just kind of sit and wait or watch what the person is doing if it's that person's turn. So, generally, a game works where during your turn, maybe if it's a card game, you pick up a card and you maybe put a card down depending on the rules but you would do that during your turn. And then again, a very common question is whose turn is it? Sometimes when you're playing a game, you're also talking. Like games are meant to be fun social activities. So, you might talk and laugh and then at some point, someone might say, okay, um, whose turn is it? Um, because you've had so much fun talking about something else that you've forgotten whose turn it is. So, when you play a game, you take turns and a very common question during a game would be whose turn is it? At least if you're playing with me, that's a common question. I'm often saying whose turn is it? So, die or dice. We don't use the word die very often anymore. So, this is a pair of dice. I don't know if it'll focus. It'll focus by my face. So, I'll put them over here. This is a pair of dice. Um if you have just one, it's called a die but generally, a game requires two or more dice. So, you usually just say dice. Um they make a nice little sound um and you can see that they have numbers represented by dots. Let's see if we can get it to focus. If I hide my face, yeah. Numbers represented by dots from one to six. So, a lot of board games will come with dice. A lot of board games require dice so that you can play them. And again, it, you might just have one dice. You should say die but we ought, we don't usually say die. Um or two dice or three dice or five dice. There are some games that require a lot of dice. And what do you do with them? Well, it's used to randomly generate a number and then if I roll the dice, these are a little bit different than mine. If I ro- let's pretend my hand is a table. If I roll the dice, then a number will come up. This is the number. Oh, it was a six. Now, it it rolled over. So, I should have brought a little table here. Do you think I can roll the dice onto my phone? We'll see if we can. So, you can roll the dice. Ah, there we go and the number that came up is a seven. Anyways, you roll the dice and again, you have dice to randomly generate a number and then you do something in the game with that number depending on the rules. Maybe you get a six and you move your game piece six times on the game board um but that is what you would use dice for. That's a lot of people chatting. We should uh, we should roll dice more often. When you play a game, you usually need to keep score. You might do this on a piece of paper. Um there might be a little device that comes with the game with sliders that help you keep score. You know, it might have the numbers one through ten on a piece of plastic and a little thing you can move. Um but generally, you need to keep score to to figure out who wins and who loses. So, this game is called Yahtzee. When you roll the dice, you get a certain number of points and someone will write that down. A common question in a game is who wants to keep score? Usually, one person will keep score during the game. So, they'll get a pencil and a piece of paper and it might be like this where it comes with the game or you might just get a a piece of paper and write everyone's names and then at the end of every round, when a round is over, you'll record everyone's score before you play the next round and it depends on the game but you need to keep score. Again, a common question before you start playing a game would be, who wants to keep score? 
If you're playing a board game, it probably comes with a game piece or token or game pieces or tokens. Here's a wide variety of game pieces from different games. There's some chess pieces. There's some checker pieces. There's dominoes up there at the top. That's a domino. There's a mahjong tile. There's a scrabble piece at the far end where you see the letter S. Um if you've ever played boggle, I think those dice with letters are from the game boggle but many games have special pieces that you use in order to play the game. So, you would call them game pieces or game tokens. It depends on how it's used in the game but don't lose the pieces. It's hard to play a game. Um we have a few games where instead of the regular piece, there's just a Lego piece in the box now because Lego pieces make good replacements for lost game pieces. So, we often will do that. And then two things. When you take turns playing a game, you might go clockwise or you might go counterclockwise or anticlockwise. In Canada, we say counterclockwise. And I think you get the point. If you take a clock and if you were to lay it on the table, if you take turns going in this direction, you are going clockwise. If you take turns going in the other direction, you are going counterclockwise. Most of the time, uh we play games, we go clockwise when we play a game. If I was to deal the cards, the person on my left would go first and we would take turns in that direction. So, we would go clockwise and not counterclockwise. I'm not sure where they say anticlockwise but on the internet, it seemed more common than counterclockwise. Who goes first? Often when you are playing a game, you will ask this question, who goes first? If we go back, you'll realize I have a few questions in here. Whose deal is it? Whose turn is it? Who goes first? So, often a game will have rules about who goes first. Sometimes you roll a dice. Notice I said dice. I should have said die but we just say dice in English most of the time. Uh sometimes it is the person who's the youngest goes first. Sometimes there is a certain like everyone picks a card from the deck and whoever has the highest card, that person goes first. Um generally though with card games, you choose who's going to deal the cards and then the person to the left of the dealer goes first. That's generally how we do it in card games. But yes, another common question, who goes first? We had another question too, didn't we? Who wants to keep score? That was the other one. I didn't have a slide for that one. So, let's talk a little bit about partners. Sometimes you play a game where you are by yourself. You try to win but sometimes you play a game where you have a partner. So, someone who's on the same team as you. I mentioned a game called Euchre. When you play Euchre, the person sitting facing you across from you is your partner and you work together to try and win the game. I enjoy playing games when I have a partner. So, you can see in this picture, partners refers to people who are on the same team. So, those two guys are partners. Also, it depends how the game works. You might sit beside your partner or you might sit across from your partner. So, I changed the slide. I don't know if you saw that. The arrow shows the two people who are sitting close together with no one between them. For this particular game, those people are partners. So, you you would say, oh, do I sit across from my partner or do I sit beside my partner for this game? So, most games, most card games that I know if you have a partner, you sit across from your partner. Some games where you play, some board games, you might sit with your partner or beside your partner and you might have more than one partner. That happens sometimes too. And there's something called table talk and this was referred to earlier. Um table talk is anytime if you have a partner, you say something or do something So, they kind of know what cards you have or what you're going to do in the game. So, let's say Jen and I are playing Euchre and I touch my nose a few times. I might be communicating to Jen that I have I have good cards, okay? Or in this case, this person is saying, oh, I don't feel so good. So, maybe someone shuffled the cards. Someone dealt the cards. You got your hand and you have really bad cards. You might say, oh, I don't feel so good. 
So you're not saying you have bad cards but you're using what's called table talk to uh let your partner know that you have bad cards. It's considered cheating by the way. Uh and that is the last slide cheating. So cheating is when you don't follow the rules. You do things so that you have a better chance of winning the game. So when you cheat maybe you put a card up your sleeve. Maybe you stack the deck. Maybe when someone's not looking you move your game piece. Maybe you roll the dice and then when someone's not looking you maybe you're like here let's here I'll I'll show you how cheating works. Bob doesn't cheat but this is how it would work. So, I roll the dice. I'm like oh look a a a cat and then when you're not looking I I flip the dice. So, now I have two sixes which maybe that's good in the game. Anyways, don't cheat. Cheating is cheating is bad. No cheating allowed. 